Dead center. Nice big thick edge. Let's see what we got. Oh, now this is different. What's up, YouTube? Georgia Silver Hunter back, and today we'll be hunting our weekly $1,000 box of half dollars, or I guess I should say boxes of half dollars, because what you see in front of you is two $500 boxes from our local Fifth Third. Um, these are actually from the previous week because I missed getting them on Saturday, so I picked them up today is what, Tuesday the 23rd as I'm filming this. Um, and uh, so I'm excited to get into them. It's been a little while since we've opened some half dollars, so let's get to it. All right, well, before we get into these rolls, I did want to show you guys for Christmas from one of my relatives, I got this cool little treasure box, and it might be one kind of like Hunting Southwest Ohio has, or maybe you might have seen it on other channels. Um, but I figured this year, rather than store all my finds in tubes, I'm just going to dump them all in here in this treasure chest. It's pretty shallow, so we may end up running out of space at some point, but this is what I'm going to do at least for now, uh, so we can keep track of everything we find throughout the year. Uh, outside of anything perhaps we might give away. So I thought that was kind of a neat little addition to the channel. So we've got our little treasure box here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get into these half dollars. And if you're new to the channel, what we are doing here is hunting uh, half dollars that we've ordered from the bank. We are going to be looking through these half dollars mainly for silver. That's really what we're doing this for because uh, 1965 to 1970, Half dollars were made of 40% silver. They're worth $3 and call it 40 cents to about four bucks a piece uh, at the most recent spot prices. And uh, 1964 and earlier, those were made of 90% silver, which puts those at somewhere around $8 in melt, $8.50 in melt. And uh, with premiums and stuff, you're probably closer to $9 to $10. Now, there's a whole host of other things that we'll be looking through these half dollars for. Basically, NIFCs, um, various mint errors and varieties, and I do have a document in the description down below this video that has a checklist of all of the things that I'm looking for, like double die obverses. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think double die obverses, no FGs, any other kind of mint error you can think of. And we might have just found our first silver. I stopped there on purpose. It could be gold plated. Something, we got, we got something weird sitting right there. So I wanted to stop here and show it to you. And it's just something weird. It's a night. It's a it's a bicentennial, but it's kind of yellowed, like it, like it's silver. I want to weigh it because they. I think there was an error planchet for the bicentennial. So let's see what it weighs. Eleven point three. I think that's pretty standard. I think somebody just. Yep. I think somebody just colored it. So I got very excited, but it turns out that it's nothing. So um, we're also going to be looking for things uh, called NIFCs, or Not Intended for Circulation Coins. Those are 1970, which is also 40% silver. 1987, which was just made in mint sets. And then 2002 through basically 2020. Although the latest red book says that 2024 will also be NIFCs, but I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, here's our first NIFC, now that I said it out loud. We've got a 2020 Philadelphia. So we'll put that on the board. Uh, I usually open the first 10 rolls on camera when I do these videos. And uh, look at that, roll number six. We've got some silver right here in roll number six. And that looks like a big old 90% edge too. Let's see what we got. Anything else in there? I don't see it. Now, if it were a 64 Denver, we would have a mint mark right back here on the back, which we don't have. So I'm going to guess it's a 64 Philly, and it is. That is pretty awesome. 90% silver. I think it's our first one this year on the channel. So I'll take it. Let's keep on hunting. We got four more rolls, and then I will go back through all of these looking for those mint errors and varieties that we were talking about. And... Uh, I may bring you in for the next 10 rolls if we continue to find silver. Otherwise, I'll just bring you in as we find things. It's just a 72. Again, let me just... Yeah, that's glad. You can hear it. 
All right, roll number eight. Here's roll number nine. Got some shinies in here, maybe some NIFCs. That's just a 95. It's just a nice 71, which we'll check for the DDO on that one. And here's roll number 10. Any silver? And that is a no. Nice 79. All right, well. You know what? The rest of this hunt is going to be a win because we are already on the silver and it's a 90 percenter. So next time you see me, we'll probably be at our next find. So we got through rolls 11 through 20 and we found what used to be a stickered quarter. It's a 2012 Philadelphia. It looks like somebody peeled the sticker off, but it is an NIFC, so we'll pull it aside. And we did find a 2004 Denver. So two NIFCs out of those. Um, I did film opening them, but because we just found those couple of NIFCs, I'm going <laughs> to get rid of that, but I'm glad I started this one because um, we've got silver just like that. And this is why I'm trying to film opening all these. Once I find 90%, I figure we're going to get more silver in that box. So right there, let's see what we have. We've got, it looks like another 90, but I don't know. No, it's a 1966, but look at that edge. That's a 40% silver half dollar. So we got 190, 140 on the box. And got some ugly chipped up, beat up coins in here. But pretty cool. All right, so that's roll number 21. There's roll number 22. So we're definitely not throwing away this a uh, little bit because whenever we find silver, especially when we can open the rolls on camera, we like to leave it in for all you naysayers out there that believe this is all made up. But these are legitimate boxes from the bank brought home and opened here on camera just for you guys. So let's see here. Super shiny guy in here, probably a 21. Yep, 21 Philly. And a 91. And here is roll number 25. And we're going to get into the bottom half of this. Uh, I like to say rack because it looks like a rack. It's 25 on top, 25 below. But we've got ourselves a little bit of a ring of death. 2005 Philadelphia. So another NIFC for the hunt. Not as exciting as silver, but we'll take it. So we'll do five more of these like we've done before, and then uh, we'll go back off camera and see if we can find some mint errors. It's been really slow on the mint errors. I know when I first got into the hobby, I would find errors pretty frequently. The 1974D double die obverse was kind of everywhere. Almost every hunt I did, I found one. Uh, at least that's what it felt like three or four years ago. And maybe it's because there's so many people in the hobby now, but I just don't find them very often. So sometimes I wonder why I take the time to hunt them, but it is cool when you do come across a nice error, especially if it's in good condition, because they can be worth, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 400 dollars. I think Rob found Rob Finds Treasure found one a few years ago that was worth like four or five hundred bucks. Um, just super nice high grade, like I don't remember what it was, 1970, like 4 DDO or something, 1974 D DDO or something like that. All right, here we go with roll number 30. Get in there. Oh, look at that. Silver hiding on the end, and it's a thick one. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, we got a Benjamin Franklin. I know I get a lot of comments. I like to call them Benjis, like most coin roll hunters. But getting a lot of flack lately for calling them a Benji, so we're going to call them a Benjamin Franklin today. We got ourselves a 1949. That looks like an S on the back. It is a 1949 S. I don't know if you guys will be able to make that out, but that is another 90% piece of silver early in the year. I will take it. I hope this is sign a sign of good things to come for the rest of the year. 
Because usually once you get on silver, you stay on it for a while. Okay, well, there was rolls uh, 21 through 30. We'll go through those for errors, like I said, and we'll get you back in for the next 10 rolls. All right, well, getting through uh, rolls 21 through 30, we did come across one more NIFC, a 2016 Denver. So we'll add that to our NIFC pile over there. And we're going to go ahead and open rolls 31 through 40. Just in case we come across some more silver. Roll number 35. All right, looks like we've got some silver again here in roll number 35, dead center. Nice big thick edge. Let's see what we got. Oh, now this is different. Uh, this is going to be some kind of commemorative. United States of America, half dollar. Oh, wow. It's been a while since I found one of these. This is, the, the one I found last time was in much better condition. This is a 1925 Stone Mountain commemorative silver half dollar. That is crazy. I think there's a mint mark on this thing. I can't remember where it is. I'm going to have to look it up. Let's weigh it real quick. I'm going to check my book and see what the actual weight is supposed to be to make sure that's legit. We're at 12.2 grams. So let me, uh, give me a second. I'm going to check my books and see what this thing's supposed to weigh. Definitely sound silver. And I'm going to find where the mint mark is as well. I'll be right back. All right, well, I'm back. I pulled up my red book, uh, the 1925 Stone Mount Memorial, uh, 1.314 million minted. And I've also got PCGS over here on the side. It does say that it's supposed to weigh 12 and a half grams. I'm at 12.2, but we are pretty worn. That could make up for your little bit of lack of weight. And it does sound, oops, I just dropped it. It does sound silver. And you guys can beat me up for hitting it with metal, but it's already pretty beat up. It does sound silver. So I'm going to say this is not a fake. 90% um, silver half, um, according again to PCGS. And a G4 to G8, or G6 to G8, this is about a $24 coin. I don't know if I could get there in this condition. I would imagine so. But uh, that is just awesome. Absolutely awesome to find in a circulated roll of half dollars. So with that, let's go ahead and get through the next five since we, we got started here. That's uh, going to be tough to beat, I think, for the rest of this box. Um, that's pretty amazing. Um, I have found one other one of those before. I think I mentioned it earlier, and it was in fantastic shape. It's a coin I'll probably send in to get graded if I ever do put an order together, um, just because it was so nice to be found in circulation. So that was roll 37. Yep, 37, if I'm doing my math right. There's roll number 38. Here's roll number 39. Thought I saw silver there on the end. It's just dirty. And that's going to be like a 21 or that's actually a 2020 right there. Here's a 2020 Philadelphia NIFC, but who really cares about those when you're finding commemorative silver? And uh, here's roll number 40. I think we might, might have silver right there, but I think it's a faker. I think it's going to turn out to be like a dirty 71 or a dirty 74, if you want my guess. It's actually a dirty 73, but that edge red, pretty gray. All right, well, like, like before, let me get through these and we'll get into those last 10 together. Okay, so we've rearranged our mat a little bit to get into these last 10 rolls, and in cleaning them up, we did come across uh, one more, we'll call it a miscellaneous, it's a necklace coin. It's where people drill holes in those half dollars and put a string through them and wear them as a little pendant, which is pretty cool. Find those quite frequently when you do box hunts, but uh, getting into roll number 41. All right, we are definitely going to have silver in here as well. I don't know, that guy looks a little fishy, but I think that's clad. But we definitely have one more silver guy right there. 
let's check it out. Check out this one first. All right, that's just an 88. This guy's definitely silver. And we have another Benjamin Franklin, or Benji, as I like to say. We got a 1950, which is awesome. So that's two Benjis on the box. Another 90 percenter. This is turning out to be a fantastic box of half dollars. And we've got another one right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's showing up in the light. That's probably a 2021 right there. Let's see what we got. So that is a 2021 Philly. We've got our nice big gray edge there. And we've got another Benjamin Franklin. It's seen better days. Another 1949. Let's see here. I just looking for a mint mark. I don't see a mint mark, so we are looking at a Philly 1949 Benjamin Franklin. All right, let's see here. Roll number 43. All right, guys, it's getting kind of crazy. This is a double, and that's three in a roll. I think we got silver here, maybe. That could be a faker. And definitely have silver there. That is a 1968 Denver 40 percenter. Making it 240s on the box. And this guy right here is, wow, I would have figured that was a 90 percenter for sure. It's a 1967 40 percenter. Let's see, we got a 66, a 67, and a 68 now. Let's put them in there properly. Let's see, do we have anything else? All right, I think that's it in that roll. Let's get into roll number 44. Maybe more silver right here. Let's see, that one's dark. Sometimes silver does come through as kind of a really dark gray or black. And we do, we've got another silver. 1968 Denver. Looks like maybe in a fire or something like that. All right, well, we're definitely picking up here in the last 10 rolls. Here's roll number 45. And we have more silver right there in the middle. Let's see here, what do we have? We've got another Benji. Another Benjamin Franklin. We got a mint mark on this one. And we got a 1951. It's a San Francisco. I'll put it under the scope. It is definitely a San Francisco. So that makes now four Benjamin Franklins on the box and a commemorative to boot. This is just, this does not happen often. But we love it when it does. All right, roll number 46. Does the silver continue? I think it might right there. Let's see. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We have a 1967. And we have a sister box for this as well, sitting right next to it. These were picked up from the same bank and the same drop. So I really hope this silver continues. That would be pretty darn amazing. So let's see here, roll number, what did I just say, 47. All right, so the silver train apparently has left. We got another necklace coin. There's a 73. That's two. Here's roll number 48. All right, come on, silver train. Give us, give us a little bit here on the end. Come on now. Oh, we did. Came back for one. We got one here. Might have something hiding under there. We don't know. Nope. I think that's a 2021 on the end or there. It is 2021 Philly. But what do we have here? We've got ourselves a 1967. Philadelphia. That is just awesome. All right. Roll number 50. Let's see what we got going on here. 
Any last row silver, last roll silver? And that is a no. All right, well, the silver train didn't leave us completely at the end, but that is pretty awesome. All right, getting through these. We'll do a wrap up of box number one. I'll give you a value on the silver as well, and we'll go ahead and get into box number two. So I'm cleaning up uh, rolls 41 through 50. I'm on roll 43, and I've got a coin under the scope. We found ourselves a DDO cleaning this up. So this is a 19, I'll try to get it under here, 1971 Denver. And we know there's two DDOs on this coin. One, it's in the word trust, where you have a really strong doubling here in the word trust. Um, when I looked at this, it looked a little fat, so it made me suspicious. But this can also come from damage. But when we come over here to the words in on the I and the N, there is another DDO that is uh, out there. And it is easy to tell because you end up with double serifs at the top of the I and you end up with double serifs kind of on the bottom of the eye. Now, this little eye hanging out here, you'll find really, really frequently. And to me, I don't think that counts if you don't also see some doubling in the N as well as this double serif up here in the eye. So what I'm gonna do is put some pictures from like Variety Vista up here on the screen so you can see uh, exactly what this looks like according to them. But I'm 99% sure that's what we have. Now, I don't think this coin is uh, in super duper good shape. It's not in bad shape. Um, probably, maybe, maybe upper AU, but maybe not. I don't know. If you guys are anybody out there that's really good at grading coins, let me know. Um, I'm going to put this aside. Obviously, we'll hang on to it and we'll include it in our wrap up. Okay, so the roll that doesn't want to quit, we're still up here on roll number 43 and we've come across a uh, Panamanian half dollar here. This is the Republic de Panama, Med Medio Balboa. It's one of, uh, typically one of my favorite coins to find, especially when it's got Balboa on the front. This one is the Convento de San Francisco, Panama Viejo 2018. So relatively current Panamanian half dollar. So we've got a foreign on the, find, on the uh, hunt as well. If we were doing a fill the board here for like a live stream, we'd have to give something away because we have some miscellaneouses, we have NIFCs, we've got 40%, we got 90%, we got commemoratives, and now we've got ourselves a foreign. So I'm just about done rewrapping rolls, but as you can see, I'm two rolls short, and that's simply because I didn't have uh, enough coins to actually fill two rolls because we had so many fines. Um, we'll go through them from kind of the top down, and we'll start up here. Uh, we had a handful of NIFCs here. We had a 19, I'm sorry, not a 19, a 2004D, 2005P. That used to be stickered, I think it was a 2012, if I recall, a 2016, a couple of 2020 Phillies, and we did end up with two necklace half dollars here. Um, the value on these things, they're tough to sell individually, especially in circulated state, unless somebody's trying to fill out an album or if you're selling uh, a complete collection, you can make a little money that way. If I were to value these things today, I would say you're somewhere between face value and a dollar. So for value's sake, I'm just gonna average that out to 75 cents uh, per. Again, we can argue about it in the comments if you like, but I'm not trying to say these are hugely valuable by any stretch. Um, a lot of times I think you are looking at closer to face value. Um, we did come up with a uh, Medio Balboa, right here, half dollar from Panama, which is really, really cool, 2018. Uh, I would say this too is only worth about whatever 30 to 50 cents US, but still very cool finding these in circulation in the United States. I hang on to all of them that I find. And uh, the one coin of value we have up here on the top row is this 1971D uh, FS102. We showed it a little bit earlier in the video. I'll throw it back up here just so you can see it. Um, right here, you can definitely see the multiple serifs down here on the bottom of the eye and the multiple serifs up here on the top of the eye. Now, this is not a terribly strong one, and I would guess this coin would be kind of in that high XF to maybe mid AU range. Just, I mean, just a quick look and guess at it. Again, we can argue about that if you want. Uh, on PCGS.com, the lowest grade that they have a price on this for is AU58. And they say, if I recall, this is something like a, uh, uh, I want to say it was a $28 coin. Uh, I am wrong. They're saying it is a $32 coin and an AU58. Now that assumes it's graded and all that kind of good stuff. And you're going to spend at least 25 to 30 bucks getting this graded. So if you were to sell it, you'd want to sell it raw, maybe list it on eBay for $15, $20 and see if you get a bite. 
Um, I'll value it on this video at $15 just to give it a value. Um, on top of that, we had a heck of a day for silver. If you are a silver stacker, if you are a coin roll hunter, these are the boxes that you hope for. And unfortunately, they are becoming harder and harder to find. Um, this is not, of course, like a huge epic box, but we had some great stuff in here. We'll start uh, on your 40% silver. We got a 66, 367s, and 268 Denvers. Uh, very cool, 40% silver. We did get ourselves one nice 1964. That's going to be our 90% silver. We got a 49 or two 49s, a 50, and a 51. I called out the mint marks earlier in the video. Uh, these are also 90% Benjamin Franklin half dollar. So very cool to find those in circulation. And of course, this just takes the cake. This is the second one I have found in circulation. Uh, I understand these have been counterfeited in the past, but based on the wear, the weight, the sound, I'm going to guess this is legitimate. Um, I mean, some of you may disagree with me. I did look this up on PCGS, and even between like a G4 and a G8 or a G6 and G8, this was a, a fairly, uh, fairly good like $25, $30 coin. Um, so that is pretty cool. You can probably find it on eBay for a little bit less, uh, especially in this condition. But this is the kind of coin that I flip up and hang on to because how often do you get a nice piece like this at face value? So uh, I know this video is running pretty long. I'm going to go ahead and get into box number two. And barring it being a box like this, we'll probably get through box number two pretty quickly. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully it's loaded with silver as well because it is a sister box to this one. So let me get the mat cleaned up and we're going to jump into that guy right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into box number two. I'm going to just open five rolls here on camera really quickly. And if we don't find anything, I will fast forward on through this. But uh, I just wanted to, just in case we have another box with a bunch of silver in it, wanted to capture getting the first few pieces on camera. There was roll number one. All right, well, there's five rolls, no silver. So I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera. I'm not gonna film this box like I did the last one for fear this will just take too long. Uh, so I'll just bring you in at any major find. We'll skip over NIFCs and necklace coins and things like that. But if we find any silver, I'll be sure to bring you in. Well, just like that, box number two is done and we have absolutely nothing to show for it. But I'm okay with that because the first part of this video, the first box was probably really, really long. But honestly, it was really exciting. We found a great, a, a great deal of fun stuff. So if you didn't go back and watch that video or the, that part of the video, make sure you do because this is all the silver we found. We found a foreign. We found a nice DDO. So this is the kind of box that you hope for every time you pick up your boxes. Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen that often. So I had a blast and I hope you did too. If you did, let me know by dropping down below. Click that like button and leave me a comment while you're down there. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and if you're new to the channel and you like coin roll hunts, I do a whole lot of them. Half dollars, I've been doing a lot more than I used to, but I'm trying to mix it back in with doing more and more penny and quarter and nickel and dime hunts. So if uh, you want to see more of those, make sure you click on that subscribe button and click that little bell and select all so you get notified each and every time I do release a new video. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And a uh, special shout out to all my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel each and every month. It means a whole lot to me. If you're interested in the memberships, make sure you check down below this video. There's a join button. Or if you're on your phone, I can't remember where it is, but typically there's a join button. There's a, definitely a link to it. Tell you all about our memberships. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll get some more half dollars this week and uh, we'll get some more hunts out there. I still have my DC Mint uh, trading coins that I need to open. I'm excited to get into those. So I haven't figured out if I'm just going to do a video or maybe do a live stream on that. Let me know in the comments down below. Should I live stream that or not? That's a good one. Anyway, you guys take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.